Hello everyone, I am Arthur Parmentier and I am very glad to present to you today the modular tool for automatic sound painting query recognition and music generation that I have built in Max MSP during my master thesis at EPFL last year in collaboration with Ken Guernel and Constance Frey, who were also my supervisors. In this talk, I am first going to present to you some elements of sound painting to motivate my work on this recognition tool. Then we're going to see a demo of it before I introduce the software architecture globally and then dig into the details of each layer. Finally, I will discuss the performance of the program and its usability for artists and programmer users before concluding. So according to its creator, Walter Thompson, sound painting is the universal multidisciplinary live composing sign language for musicians, actors, dancers, and visual artists. In practice, most of the time the sound painter, which is the live composer, would stand in front of an orchestra and use series of signs, like sentences in a sign language, to make some requests or queries for the orchestra to play. For instance, there's the query whole group long tone high volume play, which can be followed, for instance, by percussions of brass low volume. As a performer, it's usually expected to react to the sound painting request as soon as possible. However, I experienced when working with electronic devices on stage that it would be very hard or even impossible to make it when using buttons or complex interfaces. And that's how I started thinking about ways to compose directly with the machines without a human interpreter and create some kind of recognition program for sound painting. So let's start by watching a video example of the program running. Yeah, so this was an extract from a series of tutorials and demos that I've made about the recognition tool. So if we take a look at the global program, it is made of independent layers that each achieve specific functions. First comes the input management layer, which is the part that receives data from the inputs, computes the features and distributes them to the different classification models. Then there is the sign dictionary layer, where the user can define, record, store, and load signs. At the core of the structures, they are both the classification layer that performs the individual signs recognition, but also the parsing and request forming automaton that parses the expression based on the sound painting grammar and outputs the instruction to the different devices in OSC format. Finally, there is also the orchestra simulation part, which in its current form, I consider more as a demonstration module to show the abilities of the recognition program. About the input management layer, so the program comes with two built-in inputs, PoseNet and HandPose, which are skeleton-like pose estimation models for a single person body and the hands. They only require the use of one or two webcams, and from their raw data, we can compute translation and rotation invariant features by taking only the most relevant data points and normalizing them with respect to body height and shoulder width. The users can also implement at that point their own inputs, as I made no assumption on the size of the fixture vectors nor on the number of inputs that can be used. And once all the inputs are set up, the user can route the features to the different classification models that we're going to see later on. So next comes the dictionary layer. Its role is to build a simple dictionary of all the signs that are recorded as a matrix in multi-dimensional labeled buffers, each column corresponding to a specific time frame. 
To define a sign, the user must enter two properties, its name and syntactic category. They can also record one or several signs in a row, save them to files, and load previously recorded signs. Let's now take a look at the classification layer. For the system to be able to recognize the signs, we decided to focus on lightweight, interpretable models that can be trained fast and identify the signs that are performed in real time. In our case, the identification is a simple classification process in which we ask the classifier to predict the class of the gestures or poses performed among a set of classes that have been previously learned by the model. You can see that several models are used at the same time in the demo. The reason for this is that sound painting uses different types of signs. Some are gestures at the full body scale, some are poses at the hand scale, and the two of them can be modeled separately. I have used in each case a companion software Wikinator that already implements several classification models, and I chose a k-nearest neighbor model for the hands and a dynamic time warping model for the full body, each running separately. At the output of Wikinator comes back the class probabilities from which we are identifying the signs after a simple thresholding. The next layer, the automaton, is perhaps the most complex but also most original element that I have built into the program. The automaton corresponds to a simplification of the most common grammatical mode in sound painting. It allows us to represent a sequence and understand each sign as a particular syntactic function in the query. It also recognizes when a sign is wrong and provides feedback to the user about the correctness of their query. The query is then converted into OC format that can be used to communicate with the outside world. In our case, we use a VST that can receive MIDI notes and the MIDI notes are sent from the reading of score and roll object from the Bach package that each corresponds to a given musical content of a given instrument and that the user can write and edit just as a normal score. This implementation allows us to predefine a set of possible musical elements with Bach objects that are then chosen randomly in the play. Future approaches could rather uh, rely on probabilistic model generation um, and models of interactions between the different instruments. I have built and tested the tool on my relatively high-end personal computer with a dedicated GPU. And overall, I found out that a good target was to achieve around 15 FPS and to adjust the input size of PoseNet in order to match it while using the most accurate and heavy model for PoseNet. I decided to work with two seconds training example, and in order to match the 15 frames per second from PoseNet, I set up the default sequence le length of Wikinator to 30 in order to avoid downsampling. Uh, the reason why we're keeping the FPS low is to achieve fast classification, so that it would be perceived as real-time recognition. And with the performance of my computer, I was able to recognize a set of 20 basic signs successfully. However, there are some limitations on the performance and usability of the tool that we would like to raise. First, PoseNet and HandPose are very sensitive to light conditions and the background, so it dropped in performance with my poor quality web camera in dark conditions. Then we would also like to release an executable version of the tool so that it can be used by users that are not familiar with programming, which can be a limitation at the moment. And finally, for more than 20 signs, uh, we experience difficulties at discriminating between similar gestures with a higher number of false positives and noticeable delays in the classifications. To conclude, I think this is a creative and exploratory tool for artists and programmers that expands the possibilities of sound painting performances and pushes for new linguistic approaches to it. Using only web cameras or your own motion capture device, uh, you can train and define your own set of about 20 signs and control a set of electronic devices on stage or at home. In the future, we would like to release an executable version of the tool and start a user-centered evaluation of it during live performances. 
Thank you for your attention.